Welcome to this GRASP seminar. Okay, so first of all, I thought I would just give you an outline of what we're going to be doing today. So we're going to be starting off with me telling you a little tiny bit about who I am. Um, we will then look at the components, the features of GRASP, the methodological approaches, and we will have a unit walkthrough. Let me tell you something a little about me. I'm Katie. I'm a trainer with um, Prime Press based in Athens. As you can hear from my accent, I'm British, but I'm also half Greek. And um, I live in Greece. I've lived here for a very long time. I consider myself to be an ELT lifer because I've spent all my professional life dealing with ELT in different roles. We'll just have a really quick look at, at these. I started off being a teacher. I've taught every level, right from small kids to university students to adults, but my greatest experiences were teenagers. And that's the group that I actually like teaching the most. I've also been a sales consultant. After teaching for several years, I wanted to do something different. So I got a job with the then Heinemann ELT and I had a whole area of Greece where I visited school owners trying to persuade them to buy our books. Um, my real interest, however, was in the editorial side. And so when they opened um, an editorial office in Athens, I became a field editor and I worked my way up to publishing manager. Um, when I had done that, I went freelance and I started doing materials, writing and editing for ELT um, publications. I then also, at the same time, I was doing lessons as well, but I also became an ESOL speaking examiner at the British Council, Cambridge exams. So Ket and Pet, um, first certificate, the advanced and CPE as well. I did that for quite a number of years. Um, I then became a teacher trainer here at uh, Prime Press. Unfortunately, that was stopped because of COVID. But I'm really looking forward to when we all get vaccinated, maybe this time next year, that I will be coming out into your markets and meeting all of you in person. I'm really looking forward to doing that. And somewhere along the way, I managed to get the Trinity Dip Teasel as well. Um, OK, let's have a little look at the components of the course. So there are the student's book, the workbook, the teacher's book, the grammar book, the interactive whiteboard software, which obviously works offline as well, the e-kit and an audio CD. Now, I don't have at the moment the interactive whiteboard software or the e-kit or the grammar book. We're going to be focusing mainly on the, the features of the course as a whole and on the workbook and the student's book. But as these are really kind of key selling points, I suggest that at some point we do another seminar that is um, focusing mainly on the, excuse me, on the e-kit and the um, interactive whiteboard software. So if, if you would like to do that, then we can arrange to do that at some point in the very near future. Um, let's have a look at the, the features at a glance of GRASP. Um, there are seven levels. And these are in line with the CEFR levels A1 to C1+. It's a course designed for secondary students. Um, so they're teenagers. Each level of the course is age appropriate. So the A1 book features um, topics and photographs that appeal to students of that age and at that level. Um, the, the units are theme based and the topics were particularly chosen to appeal to teenagers of the different ages as we go through the levels. The content is international, but it's culturally sensitive. So there's going to be nothing in there, no visuals, no content that is going to upset anyone. Parents, school owners are going to be quite happy with it. And I think that's quite important. Um, one of the, the biggest features um, of this is that we have CLIL lessons every second unit. And when we go through, when we do the walkthrough, we will focus more on these. Um, it uses a range of methodologies that cater to students' different learning needs. 
and it accommodates different learning styles. Again, in a minute, we're going to look briefly at the methodologies. And I think this is a very important point here. There is a constant balance between accuracy and fluency. Um, when I first started teaching, the focus was on accuracy and there would be teachers would do the course books. They used to skip the skipping, the, the speaking bits and one hour a week, the English girl, not me because I was a, a, a full teacher then, but the English girl would go into classes and would spend an hour a week doing conversation practice with the students. Um, that resulted in students not being very fluent. Um, they knew the rules, they could tell you how to use all the tenses, they could talk about conditionals, when to use passive voice, but if you asked them something spontaneously, they weren't able to produce the language. And I remember I had once um, a CPE class, a proficiency first year student, who couldn't tell me what the time was, although he was quite capable of discussing current affairs. So one of the, the most important, I think, aspects of GRASP is that there is this constant balance between accuracy and fluency and integrated skills. You'll see as we go through the units. Um, as we said before, there is full teacher support with the teacher's book, the ebook, and the e-kit. Let's have a really quick look at the methodological approaches in GRASP. The first one, okay, it's based with on inquiry-based learning. And this emphasizes the student's role in the learning process. So the students are encouraged to explore the material, to ask questions and to share ideas, as opposed to just sitting and listening to the teacher talk. The content makes the students curious and want to explore further. Um, it also has experience based learning and as you would imagine, um, this uses the students own life experiences, taking what they know of life and building on it. So the content is actually meaningful to them. In both of these approaches, the students learn by doing and not just memorizing the information. You'll know this saying, almost every culture has a version of it, but I think Confucius is supposed to have been the first one that said it. Tell me, and I'll remember for an hour. Show me, and I'll remember for a day. Make me do it myself, and I won't ever forget it. Now, with grasp embracing this ethos, learning is more effective. It's more interesting and of course, it, that means it's not such a hard job for both the learners and the teacher. It's actually an enjoyable experience. Um, the, as we said before, the CLIL content is very important here, content and language integrated learning. So this teaches subjects like science, history, geography, psychology, other school subjects as well, through a foreign language, in this case, obviously English. Um, students learn without even realizing it because they're doing something else with the language. Um, the CLIL lessons produce learners who can communicate more effectively um, because the focus is on, is on developing fluency rather than accuracy, as we talked about before. Um, combined with the other sections that do focus on accuracy, it's a winning combination here. The three of these approaches help to develop the students 21st century skills. Okay, these are skills that everyone needs to have to deal with modern living. There are actually 12 in total, but we focus on the four C's. Critical thinking, creativity, collaboration and communication. And when you get copies of the books, you'll be able to go through them and you'll be able to see exactly in the activities how each of these four C's are developed. Um, now, talking about the methodology behind GRASP wouldn't be complete if we didn't mention Bloom and his taxonomy. So simply, this is a hierarchy of cognitive skills that was designed by, not surprising, Mr. Bloom himself in 1956, along with some colleagues of his, um, as a way of classifying different types of learning. It begins with remembering and goes through the stages understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, creating. 
um, which is the highest level. Grasp and actually all of Prime Press books are designed in accordance with this hierarchy and to ensure that every activity is based on at least one of these cognitive skills. Um, again, you can go through the activities and you can see um, which of these cognitive skills applies to each activity and each page. If anybody wanted, we could also have a separate session focusing on this um, or any of the other methodology. We can talk about that at a later stage. Um, you won't be able to see this in any detail. This is the scope and sequence of the B1 book. Um, just briefly, there are 12 units and there are six themes for the units. We'll look at the themes in a minute. But the main sections of the book, of each unit, are as follows. Reading, vocabulary, grammar one, there are two grammar sections, listening, language skills, the second grammar focus, speaking, writing, and every two units, there is the CLIL um, lesson. Now, even though these skills are listed separately here, every section has an element of integrated skills, um, again, to keep this balance between accuracy and fluency. The topics in the B1 level, um, the first one, okay, being sociable, family and friends, rules at school, in the school canteen, workouts, sports clubs, the biosphere, planet Earth, fun and games, jokes and stories, gatherings, and merrymaking. So all of these topics are designed um, to be attractive to students at this B1 level. We're going to have a little look through um, the first unit of the B1 book. The first page is always a poster page. And this is designed to arouse the student's curiosity here. So the unit is on being sociable. What does it mean? Does it mean the same to everyone? Who are these girls? What's their relationship? How do they feel? Why do they feel like this? Why have they got paint all over their faces? Uh, these are questions that don't appear anywhere. Hopefully the students will be able to come up with them themselves and ask each other the questions rather than waiting for the teacher to just ask questions. Um, the first page also has this box that shows you um, in more detail what each of the sections contains. So the reading is a text on how to make new friends. The vocabulary is on friendship, the grammar, present simple, present continuous, stative verbs, adverbs. Listening, it's three new people introducing themselves. The language skills, how to introduce yourself and other people. The speaking, again, introducing people, and this uses role cards, and there's role play here. And then the writing is components of paragraph. The next spread is the introductory warmer spread here and this contains different um, approaches to getting the students warmed up there are visuals there are photographs there's the did you know section um, there are quotes to be discussed there are questions here um, and hopefully this will generate enthusiasm and some um, vocabulary for to deal with the the rest of the of the unit the reading and vocabulary unit section starts here with one column um, with, it's got a few questions, discussion questions, then it has introduced some of the new vocabulary um, in exercises B and C. And this gives the, the teacher some flexibility. They can do this in class. Um, they can do this by group work, pair work, individual work, or they can set it for homework um, the teacher can adopt like a flipped learning um, approach if they want to do that. The next spread is the reading comprehension here. And this actually deals with the, the, the text that the vocabulary in the previous section was based on. Um, this one is a text on how to make new friends. Um, it has a reading text that the students have to actually do something with. They're not just passively reading it. 
um, I'll show you the exercises that they have here. The first one is reading the blog post and writing the headings in the correct place. So this is testing the, the students um, if they've understood the gist, the general meaning of each paragraph and its function. The next exercise, um, the students have to mark as true or false or not mentioned. And this, the items within this exercise, again, test different kinds of reading skills. There is reading for general information and gist. There is reading for specific information and there is reading for inference as well. The students have to try and decide what the writer meant when they were writing these particular things. Um, and in the next exercise, it's pair work. They have, there are some questions that they have to discuss together. Um, again, we've got integrated reading skills um, and speaking skills. Okay, the next part is on grammar. And as I said before, there are two grammar sections in the book, um, sorry, in the book, in each unit. Um, these encourage learners to be autonomous and develop their critical thinking skills. And it does this by using a combination of inductive and deductive approaches to teaching grammar. Very briefly, deductive is the method that most of us are familiar with. I imagine most of you, most of us were taught grammar in this way. Um, the rules are presented first, examples are given, and then students apply the rules and practice the target structure. Inductive is slightly different. The learners look at the language where the target structure is being used through examples, and then they have to work out the rules or patterns for themselves. So the, the grammar sections in GRASP have a combination of these two. Um, you can have inductive lessons um, to different degrees of being inductive, and you'll see when you actually have the books and, and you can have a look through them as to how um, the, the book uh, introduces each of the grammar topics. Um, here's an example of the, the first grammar section. Um, you won't be able to see the activities, but you can see that it's um, nearly a spread. It's a, a page and two thirds of the second spread. Um, there are a variety of exercises here um, using the language, looking at how the language is used, how each structure is used and why. And then it culminates in um, a discussion which makes the students, the questions are designed to make the students actually use the uh, grammar structures that have been targeted here. So again, we've got this combination between accuracy and fluency. Um, the second section is not on the next page, but I've got it here, um, is one page of a secondary um, grammar structure. In this case, it's adverbs of manner. Um, and it's dealt with in the same way as before. It's a combination of, of different um, types of exercises culminating in with, culminating with a discussion. Um, again, with this balance, accuracy, fluency. Um, we then deal with the listening and language skills. Now, this was on the, the first grammar page. It introduces the uh, topic that is going to be in the, the listening and language skills here. So it's discussion again, and um, there are pictures too that students can look at, the ones who are more visual, they can get more ideas um, than just reading the text. Um, the actual speaking, the, the language skills pages here, we have listening activities. Um, each of these pages features an everyday English box. And this has all of the um, useful English that the students will need to do the activities and to be able to use it themselves. Um, again, there are visuals here. We've got a quotation to be discussed. Um, there's an exercise where the students have to correct any mistakes, focusing on accuracy. They've got discussion topics here. How can you make a good impression um, in, at a job interview? Okay, now most of the students won't have got that far yet. So it stretches their brains a little bit, makes them do um, some critical thinking activities as well. And then the speaking practice on the next page um, has a variety of different role plays. Um, here there are two kinds. 
and a discussion as well. The students are encouraged to, to swap pairs again. Um, the last, the, the next bit, sorry, is on writing skills. And the students are given a text, a model text where they have to do something. Here it's about um, numbering the paragraphs, looking at what the, the different paragraphs are doing. And then um, they are given their own uh, writing task to do. All of these have, the, all of these are guided. So there are points at the bottom, um, checklists that help the students uh, when they're actually thinking about their and writing their, their writing tasks. Um, we then get onto the CLIL section here. Now, why, what is beneficial about having CLIL lessons? So with GRASP, unlike English medium environments, the learner is not expected to have a proficient user language level at the beginning of the course. And this is very important with um, language learners because they, although, they, although they'll be, they're dealing with topics in English, the language here is graded so that they won't actually have to think too much about it. Um, they'll be learning, the, the lesson that we're going to look at is a science-based one. Um, they'll be looking at a new topic, but the language won't be so difficult that they won't be able to do the task. Um, students learn the language almost without realizing it. It's interesting for them, it's something different. And the students' horizons are broadened by doing this. And it allows the lessons to be more student focused and therefore more empowering for them. When we have a look at the lesson, you will see actually how little the teacher needs to, to dominate these lessons. Um, and as with everything else in GRASP, it develops 21st century skills. Okay, um, so this is a CLIL lesson. I think it's from lesson six or eight, unit six or eight in the book. Um, this is a science one. It's about the, the water cycle. And it begins with the students working in pairs or in groups. Um, and it's meaningful. They, they have to discuss how often do you get these different types of weather in your area. So it's taking the general and taking it, give it, taking it back to their specific situation. They then have um, a reading text that presents the new vocabulary in context. And there is a glossary. Here there's only a couple of words. Sometimes a glossary is longer. Um, there is an activity where the students have to read the text and then they have to label the diagram. This can be done in pairs, it can be done in groups, um, it can be done at home if necessary um, in a flipped learning um, situation if the teacher chooses to do this. Um, as I said before, this creates a situation where the teacher doesn't have to be that involved. They can monitor, they can go around, they can encourage, um, they don't have to stand at the front of the classroom and teach traditionally. Um, the next section is a discussion section here, and this develops critical thinking skills, as well as my favorite fluency topic again. Um, then they have a project to do it yourself, where they have to, in every CLIL lesson, they have to actually do something for themselves. So the project work encourages collaboration and communication, okay, two of our C's, 21st century skills, and it's also motivating and empowering for them. So they're learning the language while they're doing something else, and that's very important for them. They have extra reading practice here, um, and the task, doing this task together necessitates collaboration and communication. The last page in the unit is a fun page, and this contains um, vocabulary work and some kind of puzzle, either a crossword or a word search. So that's the, the basic outline of the student's book. Let us have a little look at the workbook now. Um, and I need to say something about the workbook, even though it's called a workbook, this workbook is far more than a normal workbook. Normally with workbooks, you get same old exercises, rehashed, um, presented in different ways. This workbook is more of an extension. Um, 
you'll have a look. It looks different for a start. It's in full color. It starts off with the with the poster page again. Um, there's reading and vocabulary. This is new vocabulary, related vocabulary, but related um, okay, to the topic of being sociable, but it's a different topic here. If we have a look at the next one, this particular one is about why should everybody should have an e-pal. Okay, this is a nice text, it's a blog. Um, again, the, the student, there are questions for the students to answer. Um, they're directed here to work in pairs, they can work in groups, they can then feed back to the rest of the class. Um, reading comprehension questions, different reading skills, um, culminating always in a discussion, okay, based on what they've, on what they've seen. So we've got uh, the different integration of skills and the fluency and accuracy. Um, the next spread is that half of the spread is, uh, is grammar, and this doesn't introduce new grammar. It deals with the same grammar that was introduced in the, in the student's book um, with a variety of different exercises here. Now, exercise B, it asks the students to describe the pictures. Um, so what they're having to do here is they're having to use the correct tense, either the present simple or the present continuous, depending on what the picture is. So this will actually, it gives them practice. Um, it encourages their fluency and there's enough accuracy work here as well. So hopefully they will be able to be, um, to produce spontaneous language accurately, which is a nice aim to have. Um, it goes on um, exploiting this. Imagine, let's have a look. Imagine you're looking out of your bedroom window. What can you see? Describe the scene to your partner, your partner, will draw what you describe. This is nice, it's creative, it's spontaneous. Um, the students are imagining it so they can imagine any scenario that they like. Um, then we go back to having a, an exercise on accuracy. Um, they have to correct the mistakes. Um, and again, culminating in ask and answer the questions with your partner, okay? Fully integrated um, skills here. The, the listening and language skills, okay, they have listening activities, um, there are photographs, visuals for the students to, uh, to discuss, sets the scene, um, they have listening exercises here, um, and which test the, the different listening skills. Again, discuss the questions in groups or pairs. Then we actually have the, the designated speaking section which I, I really quite like because there's speaking everywhere. Um, but this one is role play. And the role play activities are nice because the, it takes the students out a little bit of their own environments. They can pretend to be, to be somebody else here. You are a parent. Um, your son or daughter wants to go on holiday with their new friend and their family. Have a discussion to find out more about the, the friend before agreeing to the holiday. So it's within their comfort zone, but it gives them a slightly different um, perspective and it requires them to do some spontaneous talking. Um, writing section again is related here. They're given, um, they start off with a discussion. They are given a model um, writing task here where they have to do something. And then at the end, they are given a writing task. Um, again, there's a little checklist to help them. Um, and the last page of the workbook unit is a vocabulary expansion. So this is like um, a picture dictionary here. It has new vocabulary that's related um, that the students can use at a later point. So that is the, the student's book and the workbook particularly. 